The Magic are set in their future. They know exactly who's going to be in charge and exactly what they're going to try and do. The Magic are prepared to are prepared and set and expected to extend Jeff Weltman's contract. Now the clock is ticking. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is January 11th, 2022. My name is Philip Rossman-Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic reportedly are set to announce that they have extended the contracts of Jeff Feltman and John Hammond, their management group, through the 2026 season. We'll talk about why this was a good decision, uh, what they've done to earn that, and what this means for the team moving forward and why this officially means the clock is ticking to get this rebuild going. Although we don't like to put timelines on things, but uh, unfortunately there is a, a deadline here now. We'll get to all that coming up, plus a review of where the Magic stand at the midpoint of the season. Before we do that, though, I want to thank you all for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Um, whether you're listening to us right when we upload, whether you're listening to us when we... Um, whether you're listening to us at work, uh, on your way home, on your way to work, wherever, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. You're available wherever you download podcasts as well as streaming on YouTube. The news that we got yesterday um, was largely expected. Um, I don't remember if I did an episode on this, but throughout the offseason, throughout the summer, it was widely assumed and actually I think briefly reported that extensions for both Jeff Weltman and John Hammond were in the works. This is the final year of their cur- of their original contracts. Um, they signed the four or five year deals that they signed when they joined the franchise in 2017. Um, this was the final year of the deal. And of course we all assumed, um, and maybe that was too much of an assumption, but we all assumed that, Jeff Weltman would not have made the franchise altering changes, um, the, the just the franchise shifting changes that he made uh, last March at the trade deadline. If he wasn't going to be brought back, um, you know, you don't fire the coach, you don't um, start a rebuild without assurance that you're going to be the one to see it through. Um, why the reports of an extension agreement coming? took all the way to the midpoint of the season. Why, um, you know, we're expecting an, a formal announcement of it later this week. Why it took this long to finalize uh, this deal with Jeff Weltman um, is a fair question to ask and one that I don't really have an answer for. But the bottom line is this was expected. Um, this was probably the right decision considering uh, how the Magic decided to do this rebuild and, and you should trust the guy who, kind of initiated the play and who hit the self-destruct button and you gave the permission to hit the self-destruct button. Um, that it is probably the right move for the magic. Um, you know, there are plenty of fair criticisms of Jeff Weltman from his use of second round draft picks to uh, deciding to blow it up as late as he did instead of doing it from the beginning, from the very start um, to uh, the way that the Magic are very coy about injuries um, and, and where players are at in their recovery. Um, Adam Adam Shadoff of Fox 35 here in Orlando um, con- was the first local reporter to confirm the extensions. It was originally reported by Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN um, and added a little nugget that he asked about the injuries and got word that Jalen Suggs, Markel Fultz, Jonathan Isaac will be returning sometime in the near future, which is exciting enough to get fans a little excited, um, but also vague enough to, you know, say, well, what, what does the near future mean? Um, certainly, you know, we know Mark, we know where Markel is. He's been practicing a little bit with Lakeland. He just got out of health and safety protocols last week. Um, he appears to be nearing a return. Um, uh, my guess is still that he will be back during the homestand that starts the 21st, I believe it is. Um, January 21st against the Los Angeles Lakers is uh, the magic of a five game homestand before they go on a West coast road trip. I suspect that if we're going to see players return, it will be during that homestand. Um, that way, 
that, you know, or at least that would be a goal. Um, whether they will or not, I, I don't know. But if I were a betting man, if I were trying to bring these players back, um, that would be where I would bring them back. Um, Jalen Suggs is still progressing through his injury. It's not clear what his timeline is. He's they're supposed. I think he's supposed to go in for an evaluation this week. Um, we are nearing, I think this is either four or five weeks since the injury. Um, so, you know, we're certainly nearing a point where we would expect him to return sooner than later. So again, that home stand, I think would be a good opportunity to do so. And of course, no one really knows where Jonathan Isaac is. He just released a book. Um, you're, you're, I, I, you're free to go try and buy it or not, buy it or not. Um, it is certainly getting passed around in some circles that I don't like to, I don't like to travel too far, too far into, but I'm just acknowledging that the book exists. Um, nonetheless, um, it is that frustration is real. And, and, and I think criticism of the way the magic have handled their injury questions this year is perfectly fair. Um, this is a point in the rebuild where management needs to have the most trust. We're fancy to have the most trust in management because right now things look bleak. Um, right now the magic don't look like a functioning team or, you know, maybe that's a little unfair, but the magic are one are the worst team in the league right now. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think by the only measure they're not is by net rating, but they have the worst record in the league by a few games now. So they built a little bit of a cushion if they want to win a few here. Um, they've got the worst record in the league by uh, net rating. Um, they have their worst franchise record at the 41 game mark in, in franchise history. Um, they, you know, have dealt with a lot of injuries. Sure. But this is a team that, that is struggling on historic levels for this franchise. Um, Yet, I would argue that the vibes are pretty good. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the coming days. But um, the vibes around this team are still pretty strong. Um, and, and it appears that the Magic are, are pleased with the way that Jamal Mosley has been able to keep the team's attention and keep the team's focus through the losing and not let the losing affect them. Um, certainly losing is part of the goal this year as they try to get another high draft pick and add another quality young player to their to their cadre of young players. Um, there, There is a lot still at work. But let's make no mistake about it. Now that Jeff Wiltman has secured the bag, so to speak, um, now that he has secured a contract extension, the clock is now ticking. This is the 2022 season. This is the first year of a rebuild. I know that the Magic have gone through a decade-long slog since they traded Dwight Howard, but this is year one. They made the moves to, to sweep away the franchise and start fresh last year. This is year one. It was always going to be a struggle. The Magic's record is maybe worse than a lot of us expected, certainly worse than I expected. And I expect the team to finish, to have a really strong second half of the season. They have the seventh easiest schedule um, by opponent win percentage in the entire league for the second half of the season. They're going to pick up some wins. Um, you know, they're going to get to 20 wins. I have, I have very little doubt that they're, that they, they, that they're not going to set the franchise record for worst, worst win percentage of the season. Um, I feel very, very confident about that, especially as guys come back from injury, but, but to be, to make no bones about it, the clock is now ticking. Um, when the 2025, 2026 season comes around in four years, uh, Jeff Wellman's going to have to show progress. Um, the magic can't be scrounging for lottery picks or scrounging at the bottom of the Eastern conference. They need to be competing for the playoffs. They need to be showing steps and signs that they're, they are moving forward, that they are nearing, honestly, by 2026, we need to be thinking that this team is probably near a, a second round breakthrough or a breakthrough or winning, are able to win a playoff series. You know, rebuilds are fine. Um, and, and, and rebuilds have to progress the way they progress. You can't compare rebuilds. You can't change anything about them. They need to progress as they progress and you need to take each situation. But at, at, at some point too, you got to take the steps up. And that was, you know, the big failure of the Rob Hennigan era was, yeah, they were rebuilding and they had all these nice young players, but they weren't winning. And after two, three years, you know, Alex Martins and Magic ownership lost patience. Now, there's a lot of lessons to learn from that, and the Magic can't necessarily lose all their patience or or try and speed things up or be reckless about it, which is what they were under Rob Hennigan when they traded Tobias Harris for nothing, when they traded Victor Oladipo for a half season of Serge Ibaka, when they you know, misjudged who the best players on their team were and, and how to how to make them better when they kept hiring coaches uh that weren't getting the job done. Or they, you know, again, or you know, honestly, they had a good coach in Scott Skiles and Skiles quit on the team. It just wasn't the right fit. 
Um, finding the right coach matters. And, and, and I think, you know, Jamal Mosley has gotten his share of criticism. Um, some of it is perfectly fair. But right now, I do think he is the right coach. Right now, I think he has done a lot of really good things to keep this team engaged and keep this team involved, um, to keep this team uh, fighting. Um, I do think that that matters. Um, it's not everything, obviously. And, 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 and I think even Mosley would admit there are things that he is learning how to manage and learning how to do better as a, as a rookie head coach that, that you know, you, you have to learn. And, and I, like going through these late game situations, you have to learn. Um, uh, but obviously, obviously the Magic have their work cut out for them. Um, they have their work, uh, work to do to, to get where they want to go. Um, and now they have their man in charge. Now they have the man who's going to be the one leading the way. We'll talk about what those next steps are for Jeff Weltman now that he is firmly in place coming up here in just a moment. But first, Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year. Continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering actions for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That sentence made no sense. Um, but here it is. There's a new updated desktop and mobile website, so sign up today to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code Locked On to get started. That's that's the important information. Use the promo code Locked On to get started. Get a 50% welcome bonus from football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2022 season or calendar year. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet, wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. We want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast with nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. Listen to Locked On Now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch it on the Locked On NBA YouTube channel. Um, just coming in while I'm recording, so I, I will note it now. Um, the Orlando Magic have announced that Brian Hill will be the next inductee into the basket uh, to the Orlando Magic Hall of Fame. Um, certainly a, a well-deserved honor for Coach Hill. Um, he led the team to the 1995 NBA Finals. Was part of I believe he's part of the original coaching staff with Matt Dukas. Um, if not, he joined fairly early in the franchise's history. Um, he has been a mainstay with the franchise forever. He did get a second coaching stint in 2000. Five, two, yeah, 2005, uh, 2006 and 2007. We don't like to talk about that one, but was again instrumental in the growth of Dwight Howard um, in those early in those early years. Got the Magic back to the playoffs for the first time with Dwight Howard in 2007 as an eight seed when they lost to the Detroit Pistons. Um, been a been a mainstay, obviously, on the Valley Sports Florida broadcast and Fox Sports Florida broadcast. Um, a a well deserved honor for Coach Hill. He is a a great person to talk to in the media room. Um, you know, certainly I think not coaching helps, helps, uh, ease, ease, uh, ease some tension and ease some, uh, frustration out, uh, over, over things, but, um, very, very happy and excited to see Brian Hill going into the Orlando magic hall of fame. Um, so some breaking news here on, uh, on the desk here. Um, and, and also just again, reading the press release, um, former general manager, John Gabriel will also be inducted into the Orlando magic basketball and the Orlando magic hall of fame. Um, John Gabriel was uh, started off, I believe, as an assistant coach with the team on the original on the original original team. Uh, became the general manager. Was the general manager? Yes, he was the general manager when they lost Shaquille O'Neal, um, but helped put together the 1995 Finals team, um, as well as uh, got Tracy McGrady and Grant Hill in 2000 was named uh, Executive of the Year at that point. He is currently a, I believe, his title is a special consultant to the Orlando Magic, so he's still around and, and, and definitely deserving of being in the team's Hall of Fame. Um, I have talked to uh, some people who uh, have decisions on uh, on the Hall of Fame. Uh, certainly, I, I think I think a lot of this, a lot of the ba- Orlando Magic Hall of Fame stuff, is not about who goes in, but when they go in and the order they go in. Um, considering there's probably still some COVID travel issues, um, getting John, getting John Gabriel in ASAP is a must. Um, you know, as as as, every, as people probably know. Um, he has, he's been doing, having a, a pretty high profile battle with Parkinson's disease. Um, you know, he's still going as strong as he can. Um, that guy, that guy is, is everywhere. Um, but certainly want to get him in, get him in. Um, and, and Brian Hill, obviously just a little bit of convenience, but certainly deserving of entry as well. Um, you know, I've, I, I would also say, let's get Matt Gugas in if we're going to go coaches as well, but I don't, I don't know if Matty's ready to come back to, to, to the magic quite yet. Um, 
obviously well deserved honor for both guys, uh, and so we want to we want to take a moment to recognize them before we dive back into the show. Obviously, though, um, obviously though, you know, when we talk more about this magic rebuild, we have to ask ourselves what are the next steps. Um, this year was always a wash. Um, you know, Jeff Weltman made it very very clear at the beginning of the season that the measure of success was not going to be wins and losses. The team's record is not how we're measuring success this season. It was going to be about individual player growth, which we've seen lots of. Cole Anthony has been really, really good. Franz Wagner's won rookie of the month. Um, you know, uh, players have got, Wendell Carter has been a, a revelation. Obama has been really good. RJ Hampton's had some really good moments. Um, there has been individual player growth. Um, and, and, and I would, I would argue the biggest thing for the magic is now figuring out how to make all those pieces fit together. The second goal was reintegrating players back from injury. We've obviously talked a little bit about that uh, so far that, that they just haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. And the second half of the season is going to be all about reintegrating players back from major injury and figuring out what you have. But the next steps are obviously the big ones now. Um, you know, when you're in a rebuild like this, you got to be able to kind of layer everything in and take step after step after step after step. Um, and, you know, just because this is a kind of wash year record-wise, that doesn't mean there aren't important steps the Magic have to take. It doesn't mean that this isn't a super important offseason, that this, this offseason isn't going to have major repercussions for the team uh, moving forward. Obviously, if the Magic are going to be this bad, they're going to get a high draft pick. Um, whether, you know, whether it's in the top four, whether it's five, it doesn't matter. The Magic have to hit on this draft pick. We said this last year, the in last year's draft. You're starting a rebuild. you got to hit on your draft pick. You got to have a strong base of, of young players to build with, and so we, you know, we all thought, and, and honestly, I still think Jalen Suggs is going to be a really valuable player in this league. Now, I, he may not be the superstar that we all hoped or thought he could be, but the guy can defend really well. Um, you know, he's, I think he's going to come back and he's going to look a lot better the same way Cole Anthony looked better last year. Um, he's, he's, he's still, he's an NBA player. He proved to me that he's an NBA player over his first twenty games or so before he got hurt. Franz Wagner obviously has proven himself twice over um, as a really good pick. And so, you know, was did Jeff Wolman have an A-plus draft book we all thought on draft night or an A draft? Um, yeah, it's probably an A-minus, B-plus draft. I mean, I, I think you have to be pretty pleased with what they got. What they got, But you got to build on that. Um, you know, you know I, I think all of us watching this team can clearly see that this team still needs a, a number one guy. No offense to Cole Anthony quite yet. Uh, it might be Cole Anthony. It might be Jonathan Isaac still. It might be Markel Fultz. Um, they still need a guy that kind of drives the ship. And Cole Anthony's done a great job with that. I think he's thrown his name into the hat um, for guys that this team can really build around. But you do need a guy to build around. Um, that's that's the thing still. And, you know, we thought it might be Jalen Suggs. It, it, it may not be. Um, you know, Cole Anthony, again, has played really, really well in that role for the Magic this season. Um, Franz Wagner has done some really good things, but I'm not quite sold. He's a number one guy yet. Um, you know, they're, they're, the Magic are still searching for that. Uh, and, and yes, typically you find that at the top of a draft. Um, and so, you know, no matter who the Magic pick, whether it's Jabari Smith Jr., whether it's um, Chet Holmgren, whether it's Paolo Banchero, whether it's Jay Nivey, um, whoever they pick, um, those are your top guys, by the way, um, wh whoever they pick, they have to hit on. They have to get They have to get that pick right. Um, uh, and, and, and And find a piece and find a player that they can truly, 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 truly build around and then begin shaping the roster around it. Um, I, I'm a big proponent that that one thing the Magic do have to come out of the season with is having an understanding of what kind of team they're trying to be, just like the outlines. I, I don't need to see it consistently. I don't need to see it fully, but I want to know who this team is trying to be and the style it's trying to play so we can start finding players to fit that style and emphasize the guys that you're bringing up and developing. Um you know, again, we'll go over some of the stats here coming up in a bit, but, uh, you know, I, I think that's a part where the Magic has struggled. Um, they've talked about being a good defensive team. They've been spotty. Uh, it would be it would be a kind way to say it defensively. Um, they're getting better at it, honestly, and the last two games have been really encouraging defensively. Um, they uh, have they, they have a lot of work to do, um, you know, on, on both ends to really find a, a, a key identity. I think Mosley's got them focused on the right things. I think the bell ringing plays – um, is a good concept, um, but um, it, it could consistently, consistently enacting that remains a, a, a huge, a huge issue. Um, 
The other thing you got to do is you got to find the right veterans. Um, you know, we know the trade deadline's coming up. We know that most likely one of, if not both of, Gary Harris and Terrence Ross are probably going to get dealt. Um, the Magic have a ton of cap room to spend next summer. Um, I I don't think the Magic should sit on that cap room. I think that they should be looking, you know, not for a four-year deal, not for anything crazy, but they should be willing to look and should be willing to overpay, um, even if it's in a trade. Um, for a veteran player that can support and support and, and keep this roster afloat. Um, like I said, now that Jeff Weltman has his extension, now that we have a, 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 a time that you know that we know that we're going to have to renegotiate with him and, and extend that contract, um, the clock is ticking to that point. You know, again, Jeff Weltman does not like to put timelines on things, but the reality is, a, a contract is a timeline. You know. Mo Bamba is a restricted free agent this offseason. The Magic have to make a financial decision on him. Um, you know, the, the Magic don't have to make financial decisions on Marco Fultz and Jonathan Isaac. They're already wrapped up. But, you know, in two years, you have to make a financial decision on Cole Anthony. And there's a lot of people who are already asking me, like, what are the Magic going to do about their glut of guards? I'm like, they don't have to worry about that yet. It, they, they, they got time to figure it out. They got time to see how it all plays out and see who, who they want to keep. But at a certain point, you do have to make decisions. And those decisions are usually centered around timelines, around deadlines. Um, that's how the trade deadline works every year. Nobody makes moves in January. They all wait for the trade deadline. Um, that's what's going to happen here. You know, the Magic have until 2026 to figure out if Jeff Weltman's going to stay. And so you got to start building, uh, To you got to build, and it really begins at the trade deadline. You got to start building your roster to hit that goal, to hit that goal of being competitive, of being in the playoffs, you want to keep flexibility. You don't want to like sell. I, I'm not saying sell out to make the playoffs next year, but um, you know, Gary Harris and Terrence Ross have been really good veterans. Um, and the magic need to be willing to find veterans to fill their roles, to fill that role of being a leader, to help support this team. And yeah, win them a few games, help this team win some games and grow and develop as a team, uh, as much as an in, as individuals um, in the coming year. I mean, honestly, like, I don't think we should expect the Magic to make the playoffs next year, but we should expect them to look more like a playoff team. Um, this should be the only year that the Magic are, are quote unquote tanking, or, 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 or you know, again at the bottom of the standings, at the at the at the top end of the lottery. This should be the last year of that the Magic should begin making moves again, not necessarily to make the playoffs next year, but should be making moves to improve and, and build a team that's actually going to be ready to grow and compete and, and, and make again, honestly, make the league turn a little bit. Um, that's really the timeline now that Jeff Weltman's on, that he has to start building this team up. You know, we're in a rebuild, yes, but the rebuild has to be marching forward. They can't just be st standing still or waiting for things to happen, which again was a criticism of Jeff Weltman was that he waited for things to happen um, a bit too much. And I, I think that's that's fair, and that's a criticism I've heard, um, you know, heard from NBA circles as well, that, that Weltman tends to let things come to him rather than go after things, which again, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what that, we'll see how that changes now that he has a rebuild and has a little bit of flexibility and, and money to throw around to help, help his cause out. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, I think this move to bring Weltman back is, is the right one. Um, you know, he's the architect of this rebuild. He's the one that got this thing started and, and he 100% um, is the guy to lead it. Um, you don't start a rebuild the way the magic started a rebuild. Um, if you're not going to let him finish the job. Um, and so they put their faith and their trust in him. They put their faith and their trust in Jeff Weltman uh, to, to build this team back up. And obviously there's a lot of a lot of things he has to do. There's a lot of work he has to do to get this team back to where they want to be. But now he has the freedom to do it. Now he has the trust to do it. And now he just has to execute the plan, whatever that plan is. Um, we'll start seeing it again in about a month at the trade deadline on February 10th. We'll see it again at the draft and we'll see it again in free agency and in the off season as the magic continue to shape and build this roster. Going to talk a little bit about where that roster stands and what they've done so far this season, where the bright spots are, where the concerns are uh, from the statistical standpoint, at least coming up here in just a moment. We don't have an ad copy to read, but I do have to take a pause so I can put the ad in the podcast. So obviously the Magic aren't doing well statistically. Um, you know, they. Uh, I'm pulling up the stats now. They are indeed last in the league in net rating now that the Pistons have won two games in a row at minus 9.4 points per 100 possessions. They have the uh, third worst offense in the league at 102.9 points per 100 possessions. 
They have the uh, sixth worst defense or 25th in defensive rating at 112.3. Um, I'm frankly a little disappointed at the defensive rating. My goal for the year was to fit, was to flirt with the top half of the league. Um, and while that defensive number has been rising of late, um, you know, certainly getting Jonathan Isaac back and Jalen Suggs back will help the defense. Magic's defense has really fallen off a cliff since Jalen Suggs went out. Um, it, it, none of these numbers are, are where you want them to be. Um, you know, I think we expected, we expected uh, offensive struggles. This is not a great offensive team. Um, you know, Cole Anthony, you know, kind of becoming a, a, a number one option this year, uh, you know, a 20 point per game score has been a big boost um, and has helped the team win some games late. But, you know, the big issue that this Magic team faces is just a lack of depth. Um, they they don't have they don't have depth of talent right now, um, to be perfectly frank. Um, you know, we, we, we joke about this, um, but it, it, it's true how it happens every game. The starters will get off to a good start. They'll kind of get, ha- get the team a little bit on a roll. Then the bench will come in. Maybe the bench does okay for a little while. Um, and then the bottom just drops out on them. Uh, and you, you look at the box scores co- constantly. The starters might be slightly above plus minus. They might be slightly below plus minus. But the bench is always like minus 10, minus 12. And, and there's, there's a pretty big split between the Magic starters and the bench groups. Um, honestly, I would say that the fact that the starting group has largely been good, uh, and if you look at the team starting lineups, whether it's with Jalen Suggs or Gary Harris, um, for a team with a minus 9 net rating, um, I think those groups are, are up around plus three, plus four um, net rating. So like po- they have a positive net rating, number one, and, and a pretty and a fairly positive net rating, number two. Um, the fact that those starting groups have played well, to me, is a sign that things are okay, that things are going to be okay. Um, now, could Jabal Mosley do a better job balancing his rotations to make sure the team stays competitive? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think there is partly a focus to keep the, the players they want playing together playing together and, and put players that they don't aren't so invested in or, or don't need to be playing together um separate them a little bit uh, I, I I think that's possible um certainly injuries have played a role the magic have dealt with more injuries than any team in the league they've had to rely deeper in their bench and when you're a rebuilding team your bench isn't that deep um so I do think that's a big reason for the magic struggles I do think that's a big reason for the magic having uh, the difficulties that they've had. Which is why I, I, I have plenty of faith that, like, once Markel Fultz is back, even even just Markel Fultz, like, before we even get to Jonathan Isaac and Jalen Suggs, just getting Markel Fultz back is going to help this team because they don't have a backup point guard right now. They got Cole Anthony. They try running RJ Hampton. Um, you know, they had Tim Frazier. Tim Frazier's no longer on the team now with this 10 day with this 10 day expired. Um, they don't have a lot of point guard depth, um, and it's play, painfully obvious with how disorganized some of those second unit groups are. Um, that they that they don't have the depth to really, to really, to really compete consistently. Um, So again, you know, I say this all the time about bad teams. It's never usually that bad teams have bad talent or or bad players. It's it's that they ask players to do more than they're capable of doing. And and I think that's a hundred percent what's going on with this team. They have a lot of bench players there who they're asking to carry a lot more offensive load than they probably should be. Um, They have Cole Anthony, who is, you know, emerged as a really impressive uh, score, scorer, um, but he's having to manage the team and he's having to learn how to be a, a, an NBA point guard still on the fly and, and, and improve on skills in real time. And, 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 and it's been good in some areas and inconsistent in others. Um, you know, they've had to play Mo Bamba and Wendell Carter together, which has been a, a better fit than I think people expected, but still not great. Um, you know, I think the last time I checked, they were like minus three net rating on the floor together. Um, so it's obviously not, I, I don't think it's them. Um, that, that I don't think it's them that's leading to the success. And, and obviously, I think a lot of people view Isaac as the future at the four rather than Carter at the future at the four, and Carter would slide over to the five and push Bomba to the bench, which I think would honestly help Mo a, a lot and put him put him in put him in those bench lineups and help help him feast a little bit on some weaker opponents as well. Um, overall, when I look at this Magic team at the midpoint, uh, it. it I have to give them an incomplete grade just because so much is still unknown um, about what they are. But as far as how they're playing on the floor, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been like a C, maybe a C plus if I'm being kind, um, just because we haven't seen them really take the identity that they need to take. Um, That's that to me, that's the big thing is like, I need to know exactly what this team is trying to do and exactly who this team is trying to be. And, you know, while I think, the offensive concepts that Jamal Mosley's introduced, um, the way that he's trying to have this team run their offense, 
um, it takes an advanced skill level of point guard. Um, and I think Cole's done a good job with it, um, but still learning and, and still adjusting. Um, I think Wendell Carter has actually been a really big offensive player because he just, he makes so many good decisions and, and just helps guys get to the right spot. Um, the last two games, the Magic win the last two games if they have Wendell Carter. I, I am 100% convinced of that. Um, they need Wendell Carter out there. He's been such a big boost to the team. Um, it's it, it, it's definitely, it, there's definitely a lot for this team to improve on, which we expect because they're such a young team. They're a rookie team. They're a young team. They've got a lot to improve on and a lot to get better at. Um, and, 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 and again, I, I, again, the record isn't so important. Um, you know, the seven and 34, I, I don't, I, I certainly hope that they don't finish with just 14 wins. I hope that they can get to around 20. Um, I think that should be the goal. Double, double up your wins. Um, let's get to 21. Why not? Um, I had them at 25 at the beginning of the season. I don't think that's completely impossible either. Um, but you know, I, I think the magic should be, should be looking to, uh, improve, record-wise, over the last half of the season. Again, to show a little bit of improvement, show a little bit of that step forward, show a little bit um, of the progress that you're making individually as a team. Um, there's there's individual growth. There's plenty of excitement about a lot of individual players um, that we haven't seen how those pieces fit together well. And, and it's going to be tough to do that until guys are healthy. And, and when guys get healthy, then I think we'll see guys back in the roles that they that they should be in, um, as uh, at least in the context of this team. That's where we stand at the midpoint. We'll do plenty more midpoint review. I have a little bit more to talk about coming up on tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Magic as we get ready for the Magic's game 42 against the Washington Wizards. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lockdown Magic. You can, of course, find us on Twitter at Lockdown Magic. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Sit your tune in Himalaya, Google, Spotify, Odyssey. All the fun places to download podcasts your podcast and able listening advice. You can find me on Twitter at Philip R underscore Dean, of course, for the latest on the Orlando Magic. Be sure to check out OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at OMagicDaily. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. So now go make your second listen to Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q, with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Phil Prosman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.